Hi again, everyone. We're moving at a breakneck pace because we're already learning what's going to be our fourth tense. So remember that we started off with the present tense, which was progressive. This was, uh, let's use therapeo as our example. Therapeo. So this was honor or worship, right? So we had I honor, I worship. Uh, it could mean a lot of things. It could mean I am honoring, I am worshiping, um, but it's present and it's, it could, it's progressive in its aspect. Uh, the next tense we learned was the future, which we built off from the first, the second principal part. So this was our first principal part and our future was our second principal part. Uh, and this was, adds, you know, some variety, but for the most part, a kind of standard first, per, uh, second principal part added a sigma. Uh, and this became complicated when we had a phi plus a sigma, like in grapho, this would become grapso. But that's, you know, that, those are small kind of phonological issues. Really, we, we found that for the most part, we could just add a sigma, and now we're in the future. And both of these would take um, a set of endings that we are now pretty familiar with, ending in O, A, A, Amen, Ete, Usi. So we were lucky to see that um, all of these were long and monosyllabic. All of these had a short ultima and were disyllabic, so the accent was always following or falling sorry, on the end of the stem. So that was very easy. Uh, so we were feeling pretty good there. Uh, things got slightly more complicated, still pretty, pretty fine, uh, when we got to the imperfect. And we remember that we built this also from the first principal part, but we added a past indicative augment. Uh, then we got to the stem, and then we added different endings. So I might go back these endings were for the first, for the present and the future. And for the imperfect, we had the following endings. We had on, s, e, with a movable new, amen, so that was the same, ete, which was the same, and then on. So we kind of ran into the, the slight trickiness that those two forms were identical. No way to tell them apart, but context would. So we would have, let's make it the, um, Let's get back into the right color um, and make this etherapeuan. Short means we go back to the anti penult etherapeuan. I was worshiping. I was trying to worship. I used to worship. These sorts of things were what the imperfect meant. So we have three tenses with different degrees of aspect. Now we're going to let me get a big eraser and take us into the aorist. So the aorist, as I think I've mentioned in class a few times, is built from the third principal part. So if we go back again to therapeo, that's a wrong accent, it should be right there, uh, and then therapeo, we remember from memorizing these that, well hopefully we do, the third principal part, the aorist, was etherapeusa. Well, now we've learned a bit more in Greek in the past few lessons uh, that we can understand and break down this word a little bit more. Uh, so let's come in with a... And, and break this up. So here we have our stem, therapeu, and then this is our personal ending, the omega. Here, again, we have our stem, therapeu, and then that sigma was a marker of the future. It's a tense marker, we might call it. And then again, our personal ending. Here, just like our imperfect, we have another past indicative augment, the smooth breathing epsilon that precedes it. Again, we have a tense marker, and again, it's a sigma. But then this alpha is going to be part of a new set of endings that we're going to learn. Um, let's just for to save some space take up luo and we're going to go through luo in the aorist so this is a present we want to make this aorist so we start because it's past indicative by adding that past indicative augment and now we're going to add the following personal ending so ah 
as, e, and again, movable new, amen, ate, and then finally, short alpha, on. Well, all of these actually have been short alphas, which is how, all right, let me erase that. I tried to cut a corner and I paid for it. All of these are short alphas that we're dealing with, okay? So I had Luo up there, and then I added that past indicative augment. What I forgot was that tense stem, sa. So elu sa will be our first person singular aorist form, which is what we have here, etheraposa. Here we just have it with a loose, a little bit shorter. Accent falls on the anti-penal. We can do that here too, taking it right there. So good, this is how we form it. Um, what does it mean? What is the aorist? Well, the aorist is our simple past. It's not progressive. These are things that happen one time, momentarily, in the past. This is useful. This can We can give narratives a little bit better. Imperfect was good at telling us the context of what was happening, but if anything happened only once, so a one-time deal, uh, we didn't have a way of expressing that before. Now we do. Uh, so I can translate these. Let me uh, kind of write out what we have. So we have elusa, elusas, eluse, or elusen. Now here we'll have to move the accent because this is again disyllabic. So elusamen, elusate, and then finally elusan. So what this means is I loosed, <laughs> you loosed, he, she, it, <laughs> do it in one word and then break it up, he, she, it loosed, we loosed, y'all loosed, and finally they loosed. Loosened, destroyed, however you want to do Luo. So we have simple past in all these situations. This is very powerful. This is very handy. Um, how hard is it to, to follow? Well, let's, let's look at our personal endings here that we have. The short alpha becomes our thematic vowel. And we see that it's in almost all cases. So we haven't really, or sorry, conjugations. <laughs> we haven't learned... Um, personal endings exactly yet, but we're kind of getting a sense that, well, we're going to have this sigma in the second person singular, we're going to have this men and this te in the first person and second person plural, and then we might end with a new in our third person. We can see that this is a lot like, so it's a lot like the imperfect endings. This happens for a reason. This is because they're both secondary tenses. Um, but with a prominent alpha. Where's the only place that we lose alpha? Well, that's in the third person singular. This is a weak form. This is, you know, in English or in, in the kind of phonological alphabet, we'd write that kind of upside down E called a schwa. I actually have no idea how to pronounce, to write that word, something like that. Um, this alpha to, to become weaker than an alpha, epsilon is basically the weakest character in the Greek alphabet, uh, or at least weakest vowel. Uh, so things will kind of turn into that when, when there's not a lot of strength on these. These are weak vowels to begin with by being short. So this really, in a way, should be an alpha, but it's become so weak that it's now just an eh instead of an ah. So elusa, elusas, elusen, elusamen, elusate, elusan. All right, so this is going to pose a little problem. You're going to be very tempted to think that this is third singular, but don't resist that temptation. Uh, we'll be able to do some examples which will kind of help solidify that. Uh, but note that we have a few things going on in all cases, or in all conjugations, in all examples. We have this, uh, it's a sigmatic aorist. 
This is important because we're going to get some strong ARS that don't use this sigma. We've already had them, if you remember learning the principal parts to Felgo, we got to Efugon at some point. That was the ARS, but that's clearly not this sort of ARS. We're going to leave that strong ARS, what they call the second ARS, for later. These are sigmatic ARS, and you can identify them by this combination of a sigma and endings that tend to end with, or to, to include an alpha. Uh, third person singular being an exception. Also note the past indicative augment throughout. Uh, that's telling us that it's in the past. So you should be able to tell, even though the meaning between I loosed and I was loosing might be a little bit close, we can understand, we can see a major difference in the morphology. Ending with alpha rather than some kind of thematic vowel of omicron or epsilon sigmas here, which might look like the future, but the future will never have a past indicative augment before it. Uh, so these are all kind of um, Roger Torrey Peterson bird guide ideas of saying, well, know what to focus on, and then you're going to be able to tell what type of verb this is. Look at the critical points. You know, the stem is going to be the same, you know, you just need to know that. But if you know to look at the past indicative augment, look for a sigmatic aorist, and know your personal endings. Know that this alpha is strongly suggestive of aorist, uh, and then know this exception in the third person singular. Uh, you're going to have no tr trouble spotting aorists, and then you also will have no problems translating them. Uh, so in an, an example next, next time, or maybe the second video after that, uh, we'll definitely give some examples of how to translate this, how to form them. Uh, so you'll be good to go as you move on. Thanks. See you then.